Is it time to stop normalising obesity? Now, today is World Obesity Day, an event designed to ensure happier, healthier and longer lives for everybody. Nearly one billion of the Earth's population currently suffer with obesity. And according to reports, half of the world is on track to be obese by 2035. And that is as doctors have warned that older and overweight patients are making it more difficult to clear the backlog of surgeries due to the complex nature of their procedures. And with the media seeing a surge in positive positivity movements, such as ITV's body stories and a surplus of plus size models, should we be praising and normalizing obese people when their weight could actually be actively affecting their health? So for the Great British Debate this hour, I'm asking, is it time to stop normalizing obesity? Joining me now is fitness instructor and former pres presenter of The Big Breakfast, Jodie Bunting, author of Fast Food at 30, Little Line on Alley, and television personality, Narinda Kaur. Right, sorry, I hope I said your name All right. So Litton, is it Litton or Litton? Litton. 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 Thank you very much, Litton. Uh, right, so I'm going to start with you, Jodie, the author of Fast Food at 30. Yes. Yeah, talk to me. So, yeah, I used to be 31 stones. I used to be a fitness instructor. You know, I was the I was body positive and I was fat and I was fit. So I think it's really hard to say, it, it's hard to not glamorize being overweight, but also you've got to champion these people that are trying to do something about being overweight without you know, just pushing them into a corner and saying you're glam glamorizing it. If they're, you know, eating loads and saying that's a great thing, now that's not a bad thing. But as long as they're doing something in a good way, in a positive way, trying to improve their health, trying to, try to improve their life, then I think that should be championed. Do you think? But a lot of this body positive stuff is like, you know, some, I know a fitness um, a company that had some big models, like not just plus size, but very big models. And it's sort of showing the clothes on the models and saying that obviously this is for bigger people. And that is fine. But in a way, it sort of seems to be a slight contradiction of terms. Rinda, what do you think? Well, I, I don't think it's about normalising obesity. I think it's about treating people with respect, no matter how they look. And I think there's a lot of talk around all health content as if people really care whether enormous people uh, live or die. I think it's just a smokescreen for bullying, actually. It's fat shaming and it's bullying. And research has shown time and time again that actually fat shaming and not recognizing or normalizing people who are overweight does the opposite effect. It's not helpful regardless, Anna. Mm, okay, Litton, what do you think? I, I used to be obese about a year ago um, and I lost more than 25 kilograms. It's like, uh, it was more luggage than I can put on in a suitcase and put into the hole when I go on holiday. Um, and, and it kind of crept up on me. It creeps up on people through their habits and the choices that they make over time. Uh, I, I think obesity is treated as a disease by a lot of people and i think the whole the existence of world obesity day uh it's backed by companies that are trying to get people onto drugs and being treated as disease is the opposite of what should happen to obesity obesity is actually when somebody is carrying too much stored energy on their body it's pretty simple uh, we need to get people to learn how to access that and get rid of it more for me I feel so much healthier having done it. Um, I was, I was one of those people having health problems because mm. I accidentally became obese. Mm. But you know, it's not in the drug company's interest to get everybody healthy. If you're super healthy, they don't have a business. Um, but th th does there not seem to be this creep of a sort of being big is beautiful, being big is bold? Well, it might be. It can also be quite dangerous. Do you think that perhaps we're not pushing that message, Jodie? I think. I don't know whether you saw Lizzo on the Brits mm, when yeah. she, you know, mm. she is morbidly obese mm. and she had 20 or 30 dancers which were also morbidly obese. This was a great example of body positivity. And not only those girls were like dancing amazing, but they were morbidly obese. So I think seeing more representation like that is good, but just in more of a maybe a fairer way, a fair representation, not an extreme representation. Mm. Yes, I did see that, and I thought they, they looked fabulous and all. But ultimately, it's quite an unhealthy way to be. Is, is it not, Narendra? I mean, you know, if you are obese in that manner, but it's quite... Who said, it you said it, it's unhealthy, but people can be healthy. They're not... The size of how you look is not an indicator of your health. 
healthcare professionals actually with many other indicators, their blood pressure, cholesterol levels, fat people can be healthy. Who said skinny people are healthy? They could be smokers and drinkers. Who are we to judge? I just think it's cruel and it is health concerns, like I said, as a smoke screen for just bullying people who don't look like you. People come in all shapes and sizes. And let's stop respecting that. And let's stop being a little bit more helpful. Mm, interesting that it should be referred to as bullying when actually, in reality, what you're what you're actually doing is explaining that actually if you are overweight or will your organs have to work a lot harder your joints and muscles are under a lot more pressure including the systems within your body as well and the fat around the organs which is quite dangerous sorry 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 excuse me excuse me can you can you take excuse me i haven't finished i listened to you till the end so if you do the same for me Thank you. So the point is that promoting, as some of these things seem to show, a positive level of body image because of, for those who are obese, it could it, be, could it have negative impacts is what we're asking. Are we right to be promoting it almost as though it's a positive thing? Listen, what do you think? I think you can get away with quite a lot when you're younger, but you get to a certain age and uh, you wear your system out. The, the problem is actually, having too much weight on you being obese does mm. it's been proven there's so much research into exactly. it leads to all sorts of diseases cardiovascular diseases type cancer. 2 diabetes cancers uh, i i work with now hundreds of people who are overweight um i work with celebrities who are overweight and are being told look you've got to be careful not to lose too much weight and my message to them is how long do you want to be working for you've got to think about at a certain age uh, your your body's been holding on to that energy, but it's actually, it's stressing your system out. Having too much uh, sugar in your blood, which happens to most of us, by eating the wrong kind of foods, actually what it's doing is it's wearing out your insulin system, and you don't know you've worn it out until you've worn it out. By then, it's too late. Type 3 diabetes is something that we talk about nowadays. It, it's the other name for Alzheimer's as well. It's just based on, you know, people being allowed to do whatever they want with food or people being told whatever they want to do they can do whatever they can with food but for me the choices that you make every single day uh you've got to be told look being fat at a certain age isn't going to be good for you no in a second ahead i mean these are all facts this is not bullying well i just think it's a bit cruel and i think that you could say that about a smoker or a drinker there's lots of people who make choices that are wrong for their health and wrong for their nhs the burden they put on that why are we picking on just fat people why why who are we to say you've got to stop doing this you must stop doing that why should we let people live let people no, live nobody's, they want to do. nobody's saying that you're saying that but it's sort of normalizing it uh, jody the problem is, you know, I was from a fat family. All my family and friends were fat. And these people don't realize they are putting so much stress on their heart and all their body. So, you know, without being horrible, they do need to be told and they do need some guidance. Oh, and the GPs are not doing it. Narendra, final words. But, but you don't think they know that? People who are fat or morbid, they know that. They don't need you or them telling them, you are fat, you are this. They don't need that. It's unhelpful. It's an inflammatory conversation. But, 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 but do they also need positive sort of images that sort of encourage them to carry on in that direction? Because that's kind of they what... Need to be guided. Encouraging. They need to be guided out of it. Mm. They need to be guided out of it. There'll be a lot of people sitting in company going, I'm not guiding out of anything. <laughs> I don't blame them either. But, you know, I mean, look, ultimately we look at this, it is World Obesity Day, so it's important that we talk about it because a lot of the world are affected by it and uh, it's important that we put forward different perspectives on it. Uh, Jody, uh, what would you say to somebody who's watching now who is, you know, kind of overweight and wants to do something about getting, getting fit? You're an author of Fast Food um, 30. Oh, no, that's Lytton, that's, that's Lytton. Jody, you're, you're off on the big breakfast. Talk to me. What do you say? Advice. Okay. It is all about lifestyle changes and doing small things to slowly improve how you feel. One of the biggest things for, for me and my clients is all about sleep. You know, if you're not feeling in a good place mentally, it's Im impossible to choose the right foods and actually go out and exercise. So actually focusing on your lifestyle is the first step and then look at exercise, then look at food. But again, it is all about the bigger picture. And we mentioned earlier as well about it's so easy just to change your lifestyle. It's actually not that easy. Not easy you know, at all. Actually, 
uh, sticking to a plan of getting up at a certain time or eating the right foods is hard. We've got temptations all around. Us. We've They're got everywhere. TV adverts all the time. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. Listen, I've got about 20 seconds. I want to give the final word to Little because he's got a book and stuff. So just give us um, just a 10 second thing of how you can encourage people if they're looking to get fit or lose weight or whatever. It's all about learning to navigate the world. Fast Food 30 was an experiment where I ate nothing but fast food and I still lost four kilograms and my cholesterol dropped. You can learn to make the right choices for your body, but it, you have to be conscientiously engaged with your body to do so. And you have to really want to make a change and believe that actually the fat in my cells isn't good for me long term and is going to lead me towards getting the kind of diseases that we're all trying to avoid. Thank you, Lytton Ali there. He's the author of Fast Food at 30. Also, uh, Jodie Bunting, fit fitness instructor and presenter, and also Narendra Kerr, a TV personality. Thank you so much for joining me.